Hi and welcome to The Principles of Art. The principles of art are the choice and arrangement of the elements of art and are the tools used to create a work of art. They are balance, harmony and unity, proportion and scale, contrast, emphasis, rhythm and movement, composition, pattern, repetition and variety. It's important to look at the elements and principles of art because it's a way of us describing artwork. It's also good to know as an artist. A way to explain the elements is to think of them as the raw materials and the principles of how you would mould and shape them into an artwork. Another way of thinking about the elements and principles of art is comparing them to baking a cake. The elements are the ingredients and the principles are the recipe. An artist creates a composition following a recipe with the appropriate ingredients. The final artwork created is the baked cake. So for this video, we're going to be focusing on the principles. This video will have a principle followed by a definition and visual representation about what that element means, sorry, that principle means. And I'll then show some historical examples and contemporary artwork examples. Now, just because these particular artworks are chosen to describe this principle doesn't mean that's the only principle that it shows or the only element. It's just an opinion and it's just to show and highlight some examples of principles so you get to understand them better. The first one is balance. Balance is about the way the elements are arranged to create a feeling of stability in the artwork. It shows the visual weight. There are several types of balance, including symmetrical, which is the formal balance. Both sides of an artwork are the same weight. The parts of an artwork mirrors the other like a butterfly. Asymmetrical, which is informal balance. One side of the composition is heavier than the other. This creates variety in the arrangement. Radical balance happens when all the elements radiate out of the center. So examples, so some historical examples of balance with asymmetrical balance. We've got Surratt, we've got Whistler, we've got Cossington Smith. You can see that for this particular one by Surratt, the balance is off center by the use of the color and the shapes of the people. Whistler's mother is also heavier on one side. You can see with Cossington Smith, the left side is heavier than the right. Some asymmetrical balance examples with contemporary artworks. We have Valamanesh, so we have a heavier side on the left than the right. Cecilie, so the portrait of the girl is heavier on the left than the right. And Banksy, so we've got the girl with the balloon, so you've got one side on the right heavier than the balloon on the left. Some symmetrical examples of balance. So these historical artworks, if you put a line through them, you will see that it's balanced on both sides. So Da Vinci's Last Supper is a classic example of symmetrical artwork. Carlo's work here is also a, an example of symmetrical work because even though there's different animals on both their shoulders, they're balanced by the shape and the colour. And Van Eyck's work is quite identical on both sides. They mirror each other. So if you look at The Last Supper in a little bit more detail, if we look at it as a grid, we can see that it is actually balanced on both sides. Some contemporary examples of symmetrical work. So we have the Lama work, we have Khan's work, we also have Quilty's work. So we've got the Rorschach by Quilty with Jimmy Barnes. The two canvases are put together and then opened up to show the symmetry. Some examples of radical um, balance. We've got the stained glass windows, we've got Escher, we've also got the Victor Vazzarelli work with the optical art. All of them are radiating from the centre. Some contemporary examples, very similar to a mandala, but all radiating from that central point. Harmony and unity. Harmony is achieved when all the art elements come together in an artwork in a unified way in a balanced and organised composition. If an artwork depicts harmony, it really is an individual opinion about what a viewer finds aesthetically pleasing. Unity can be the feeling that all parts of the artwork belong together or work together. It's the quality of the wholeness or the oneness. Everything works together as a completed piece. Unity emphasises the similarities. So you have harmony in shape and repetition, harmony in shape. You have unity in shape. You also have unity in colour, even though the shape is different. So some examples of unity and harmony. So just because these particular works have been chosen to demonstrate harmony and unity doesn't mean that 
they might be the same for you. You might have the opinion that they don't show those particular um, principles and that's perfectly fine. That's what's wonderful about art. It's all about your opinion and what you think shows harmony and unity. So for me, um, aesthetically, I think that these skulls show great unity and harmony together and works well as a oneness of the piece. Some contemporary examples of harmony and unity. So for me, the Jörg Schmeiser work with the etching with the, the temple shows great unity and harmony through the balance of colour and also this beautiful framing of the work. And it's a personal opinion. Proportion and scale. So proportion is the size relationship between two or more elements of composition. Proportion refers to the relationship between the size of the parts of a whole, elements within the object. Some proportions are considered to be visually pleasing, some such as the rule of thirds or the golden ratio, while other examples of proportion can be exaggerated or distorted, like a caricature, and can, can be considered out of proportion. Proportion is linked to ratio and mathematics. Proportion and scale are connected. Scale refers to the artwork's size and how the parts of the composition relate to each other. Scale also refers to the relationship between the objects with respect to the size, number, and includes relations between the parts as a whole. Scale can change the way we look at things. Artists can use proportion and scale to create depth, realism, disorientation, and drama. So we've got examples of the proportion of the face. We also have soccer ball and tennis ball. So they have the same proportion, but they are different in scale and scale of two objects. So some examples of historical um, proportion being shown in work. Um, we have the Virgilio Man, the famous work by Da Vinci, which shows the, the proportions of the human body, which is also depicted in Michelangelo's work of the creation of Adam, which is the detail of the 16th chapel, to so the proportions of the bodies. And um, Jeffrey Smart shows it in a different way with the building with the small person running between. You can see movement within this work as well, um, but does show proportion. Some contemporary examples of proportion. Christo, Ball, and Bohannes, who won the Ramsey Art Prize in 2021. So they're all showing proportion in different ways. You could also argue that they're showing scale. Some examples of distorted proportions. So we have Dali's work with the elephants with the elongated legs. You have Giacometti's elongated um, man with the sculpture and you've got the distortion of Bacon's face. Some other examples of distortion with proportion, um, not trying to rhyme, but I did. Um, you can see some different types of um, proportion being shown here. You can also argue that this particular work by Jordan is also showing scale. Some historical examples of scale, so Kirk Magritte, who has a room with just various objects in there that shouldn't be the size that they are. So you shouldn't have a comb and the glass and chalices as large as they are, but this is showing scale. We've also got the example by O'Keefe, who's showing a close-up of flowers. Some contemporary examples of scale. So you have the joint collaboration piece by Van Gruggen and Olgenberg, which is the sculpture. The Jeff Koons work um, of the puppy showing great scale. Normally puppies are very small, but for him it's very big and made of flowers and got the Rat King over there as well. You can see um, also showing a bit of proportion. Contrast is the large difference between two things to create a visual interest and tension within an artwork. It's the juxtaposition of the different elements of art to draw the eye for visual interest. You could show contrast with direction with left and right, up and down, Scale, so large against small. Complementary pairs, so you could show the contrast between. You could show shape, so round against square. You could also show space, so dark against light or light against dark. You could show texture, so smooth against rough. Shape, geometric against organic. Or 2D shape against three-dimensional form. So some historical examples of contrast. We have Escher's work, which is a little bit of a metamorphosis work between the fish and the goose, also showing some positive and negative shape there. We've got Vermeer's girl with the pearl earring, you know, the, the skin of the woman against the darkness of the background, and also Guernica, which is showing multiple examples of contrast. Some contemporary examples of contrast. So you can see Elizabeth Close with the dark against the light. 
with the beautiful colors. You've got Laura Zombie, which is throwing um, the girl in the darker costume against the white polar bear against the dark navy background. So really beautiful examples of contrast. Also got a little bit of positive and negative shape happening here too. Emphasis. So emphasis is the focal point of the artwork or the center of interest that stands out the most, grabs attention of the viewer and keeps the eye drawing back. Emphasis is achieved through the placement, contrast, co color, size, repetition, all linked to the focal point. It might be the largest, brightest or lightest in the composition. Emphasis is the visual reinforcement. So you can see the emphasis is shown here with shape. It's also shown with color. Again, mm. shape and color. You got size being shown with emphasis here. And with the color and repetition, the color is shown. The detail and color, the shape and form. So you can see the form is emphasis here. And the placement, so the apple over here is the emphasis. So some historical yeah. examples of emphasis. You got Munk with face, and depending on your interpretation on where your focal point is, you might think it's the face, you might think it's the background, you might even think it's the people in the background. Klimt, you've got the face with the dark hair against the white dress and the white background, and you've got the emphasis of the Degas ballet dancer in the foreground. Some contemporary examples of emphasis. So you have Bright's work with the portrait with the flowers over the eyes and you've got Jim Dine's work with the skull um, and your eyes drawn to the skull in this particular work. And for Grace, Lily and Lee, um, the beautiful body sculpture worn by the gentleman really um, shows beautiful contrast and also shows emphasis because your eyes are immediately drawn to it. Rhythm. So rhythm is a type of movement that is seen through repetition or alteration of one or more of the elements such as lines, shape and colour and the intervals between them which vary in distances and frequencies. It gives a visual beat and provides a path of action. Rhythm creates a feel of organised movement. There are different types of rhythm, so you get regular rhythm, repeating elements with order or arrangement, alternative rhythm, repetition of two or more of the components, random rhythm, repeating elements without order or arrangement, Progressive rhythm, repeating elements of pattern size and colour and shows a sequence of form through progression. And flowing rhythm, the sense of movement, often organ, more organic and can also be curved or circular. So you can see the different types of rhythm that are shown in these examples. So some historical examples of rhythm. We have rhythm being shown in different ways here. You could argue that we've got some flowing rhythm, got some alternative rhythm, we've got some contemporary examples of rhythm that are showing it in different ways. Movement. So movement creates motion and action by directing your eye around the artwork. Movement can have a regular repetition of elements to produce the look and feel of movement. This gives the illusion of movement and action. This gives the illusion of movement and action. Movement can be flowing, can be diagonal, vertical, horizontal, curved. Movement can also refer to the visual flow of an artwork. So some examples of historical works depicting movement. Probably the most famous is the Van Gogh work. So you can see the movement within the sky, even Duchamp's work with the nude descending down the staircase. You can see the movement of the person walking down the stairs. And even the great wave, you can see it wave. You can feel the movement within the water. Some contemporary examples of movement, they're all showing movement in different ways. The Petanyari work with the bush medicine leaves is showing beautiful movement. You can see it's all flowing through here. Composition. So composition is about the placement or arrangement of the elements of all parts of an artwork. There are different types of composition structures, including the golden ratio, the rule of thirds, golden selection, O arrangement, L arrangement, diagonal, triangle or pyramid, the V arrangement, the S shape, the focal mass or the radial. If you Google any of the compositions by famous masters, you can find the types of um, compositional styles and structures that they are. So for composition, and again, completely 
um, because I find these aesthetically pleasing. I've gone with Renoir and Carlo and Dali. And I've also put the types of composition that I think they could be. This doesn't mean that they're 100% these are what the compositional structures are. It's just what my interpretation is. You could argue that the Dali work is also showing an L structure. Some contemporary examples of composition. So you have the Quilty, the Del Catherine Barton and the Tom Buchanan. Again, types of structures is a personal interpretation. Doesn't mean that this is absolutely 100%. That's what they are. It's just what my interpretation is. Pattern. Pattern is the repetition or reoccurrence of an art element such as line, colour and shape that is exact or varied. Patterns can be repeating objects, symbols or motives. All these patterns establish a visual beat. Pattern and repetition are related. And there are two types of patterns. You get the regular repeats or the formal patterns, which repeat in the same way, and irregular repeats or informal patterns, which vary the elements, directions and intervals between the pieces. So you can see there's regular ones and informal. And some historical examples of pattern. They're all showing pattern in a different way. Obviously, Riley's work with the optical illusion is creating an illusion of movement as well. You've got Klee with the different types of patterns with the shapes and obviously the patterns within the dress of the Klimt work. Some contemporary examples of pattern. We're all showing pattern in different ways, um, using colour, using shape, using repetition. Repetition. So repetition is the reoccurrence or repeating of a particular line, pattern, colour, shape or visual or other visual element. This component is repeated when other components with similar features are arranged in the composition. Repetition works with pattern to make the work of art seem active. The repetition of elements creates unity within the artwork. So you have a repetition in shape, repetition in pattern, and repetition in pattern and colour. Now these are some historical examples of repetition. <clears throat> you can see with the Warhol work, obviously with having that many Marilyn Monroes, he's repeating the same imagery. Even with Judd with the sculpture, he's repeating the same shape. Um, and Magritte is also repeating the same form. Some contemporary examples of repetition. Um, you can see they're all using repetition in different ways. So obviously the repetition of the flower or the dots or the shape of the raw material. Variety. So variety adds interest by contrasting the different elements within the artwork. These different qualities, instances or changes increase the interest of an artwork and its energy. Too much variety causes chaos. Um, colour is in, uh, sorry, variety is in colour, shape, line, but variety can also be in brushstroke and technique used by an artist. Variety emphasises the differences. So you have variety in shape, variety in texture, variety in line, variety in size, and variety in colour. So some historical examples of variety. So you've got the Turner work. So even though you might not look at this and think it's got variety, it's got variety of brush strokes. So it's quite heavy with his brush here, but very, very smooth over there. Basquiat was showing beautiful variety within his work with different types of stroke and mark making, as is Kandinsky. Some contemporary examples of variety all showing variety in a different way. So in our art room, we have a poster which says to use these words to help when speaking or writing about art using the principles of art. So this has been um, put into this form to show you how to use um, variety or how to actually <laughs> speak about the different types of, of um, principles. Um, so I hope that this video has been helpful and hopefully it gives you a better understanding about the principles of art. Thanks for listening.